Well, we've got a pet issue tonight, all pun intended. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. The uh, canine constituency is no doubt led by State Representative Charlene Lima from Cranston, and we're going to meet her to talk about this notion that, you know, dogs are people too in the middle of divorce. Uh, I'm sorry to have a wry grin on my face. I, I, I'm waiting for the third canine legislature. If you, you really want to be a leader, there's got to be another one. But uh, there's good cause for this, and Char, I'm sure, will explain to me why this requires legislative attention. In the meantime, she's also uh, one of the leading voices on breaking open 38 studios informationally, and we'll chat about that as well. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. My, uh, do, do you say I'm good back to the TV? Or is that a throwaway? Do, do people do that, Lex, do you think? How are you? Oh, I'm good, Dan. Oh, sorry. I hope you're doing well. That's probably better. Thursday night. Um, I'm already a little punchy. Let's go to the rundown and just check on this. Now, this, I don't know. I don't know if this just blows over. I don't know if this percolates into something big. Democrats in Washington are certainly hoping it does. Washington Post headline here. Sessions met with Russian envoy twice last year. Encounters he later did not disclose. Disclose, and now the New York Times as well. Uh, you know, there's calls for recusing, which actually are coming inside the uh, Republican Party. And then Bloomberg's headline kind of confirms that uh, Jeff Sessions says, "Yeah, I'll do that if necessary." It all came because of this comment he made during his confirmation hearings in response to a question from Senator Al Franken. I'm not aware of um, any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did have, not have communications with the Russians. Interesting that that response was actually uh, almost non-responsive. A, a different kind of question was asked about whether or not he would recuse himself if, in fact, it was learned that the campaign did communicate with the Russians. Uh, now it's learned that uh, then-Senator Sessions uh, has had some communication with the Russians, and the question becomes whether or not this is perjury. Now, that hearing is under oath. Look, there's no doubt that if there's a Russian investigation that anybody who's involved with the campaign has got to recuse themselves, uh, or himself, herself, whatever. And, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Whether this rises to the level of true perjury is going to be, I guess, a product of the kind of momentum of A, information, and B, political capital that the Democrats want to spend. Remember, they're not running the show. Uh, they don't call all the shots down there. Um, but some of the crossover Republican, not so Trumpish types could make this uh, really interesting. David Cicilline, of course, has his own point of view. I think it's very clear, uh, as I said last night in my tweet, this is the chief law enforcement officer of the United States. If he, in fact, lied to the American people and to the, his colleagues in the Senate during his confirmation hearing, that is very serious and I think, of course, disqualifies him from leading this investigation, requires the appointment of a special prosecutor, and frankly, I think makes it difficult for him to remain the Attorney General of the United States. Yeah, the, the, the second part is, is the heavy lift, right? But uh, let's not kid ourselves. This Russian probe, while it's kind of been under the radar this week with Trump's pretty good performance uh, in his address to the joint session of Congress, still is a serious matter that needs to be developed because uh, we need answers. Not partisan answers, but real answers about Russian intervention in the election. Stay tuned for this one. This is going to be a dandy. All right. In the meantime, uh, what is this? I don't know. This is some kind of uh, political Tourette's. I don't I, I don't. My friend Joe Trillo just kind of lost his mind. I've been trying to figure out, did we find out if there was anything specific that went on here? I don't know. He just started to tee off. Look at this headline. Well, it's a press release headline. Boycott entertainers. Now, you're seeing this at 7.30 and midnight. I already had Joe on the radio this afternoon. Funny thing is, how do I know that? Because, well, look, we tape the TV show early in the afternoon, then I do the radio show live. So when I'm on the radio, I know what I've said on television. You get that? Uh, so I, I still have to find out what's up with Joe. But he says, I call upon Trump supporters to join me in sending a message to Hollywood elites and Broadway pontificators. And then here, I'm tired of hearing stars that I used to enjoy watching, like De Niro and Streep, speak out against our president. He wants you to boycott them. Don't go to their movies, don't buy their products that they're endorsing, whatever. Um, 
Joe gets upset every once in a while. You know, and he says, listen, don't listen to Trump for the words. Listen for the ideas. And as far as that street, hey. So anyway, I'll have him in next week to react to my impersonation. Boycotting liberals? I mean, everyone wants to stop. Stop with the boycotting. Do commerce. Vote. I don't 38 Studios Probe. I'd like to boycott this whole conversation someday. Someday we'll put it behind us and we won't have to talk about it anymore. Here's the headline. House OK's bill to open probe records. And in part, our guest, although she's very focused on the quality of life of dogs, pets in general, to her credit on a much more serious note, is at least partially, if not fully, responsible for this bill, because I know you put this in. Welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome. What's Great Trillo impersonation, what's, what's, by the way. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was well, very well, good. What's with Trillo? What's, what's, uh, what's the matter? I guess he believes turnarounds fair play. <laughs> well, you know, we, we had this Democratic boycott in Rhode Island for reasons that we're not going to discuss anymore. Uh, it was so, I thought it was specious from, from the get-go. But, you know, throwing around your economic weight is something that I think you should do only in cases of real urgency. The idea that Hollywood's mouthing off about Trump is culturally historic. But you're not here for that. Anyway. But I can't wait to hear what Joe has to say about this. Anyway, on 38 Studios, last time we visited, you were quick to point out that you thought it was constructive to put this bill in that says everything. All the paperwork, mm -hmm. open it up, spit it up, cough it up. Tell me what the bill calls for. Absolutely. Uh, it was really great that we were able to pass legislation that uh, mandates that the state police turn over all their investigatory records and that the attorney general also turn over all his investigatory records, that they any information they found pertaining to 38 studios, uh, I think we've heard the public outcry they want this information and the legislature wants this information because as I said we were snooked too and uh, so I think it's a great thing we're going to get this. The Supreme Court records we cannot get but the governor has put a request in that has to come from a request to the presiding uh, superior court Well, the court Supreme, Supreme Court records, you mean the grand jury? The grand jury records. Uh, the grand, records. Ju grand jury records and the Supreme that, is, court, that is regulated by the Supreme right, Court. Right, the Supreme Court uh, judge would decide on that. But some of the records are going to be duplicative because state police turn some of the records over to the grand jury. Mm. So, uh, state police have been a little tardy in response uh, to this stuff, by the way. Even the, gov uh, the governor doesn't ha The governor can order those state police records to be released, and I believe she has, but there's been a... They're not getting a nosebleed, getting it done under the new this colonel. This is better. She's requesting the state police turn them over. This is mandating by law. Right. And there is a precedent for this because it's happened three times before. It happened with the Colonel Young case, the officer that was shot. No one was indicted there. It happened with the station fire. They voluntarily turned the records over. And it also happened with the Cranston police um, scandal. They turned over the records. Well, look, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, so I applaud, as I did last time with you, I applaud that you're making this effort. Yet, I still think it falls miserably short of where we really needed to be as a state. I'm not putting this on your shoulders, but I want to hear you once again react to my, my urgent plea to the governor, to the Speaker of the House, to you, uh, to the Attorney General, who we find on a milk carton most days because he's absent. Uh, what is it going to take to have some independent entity, mm -hmm. prosecutor, investigator, at least collate all of this information that this bill may cough up mm -hmm. so that we can at least, in lieu of an investigation, have a summary explanation to the public that is objective and independent as to what happened with this saga. Don't mm -hmm. you think we need that? Absolutely, and it, we might be able to do that and have, with this having more of this information available, it'd be a lot easier to have that type of investigation because now we're going to have all the records. And I got to say, it was the first time I remember in a long time, um, I worked with the uh, Republican whip to fine tune the language. We fe felt it went far enough. He had an idea to make sure nothing was left out. And yeah, Blake Filippi uh, wanted what? What did he, what did he ask He for? had an amendment to tighten up the language even more. And so we accommodated him and passed that amendment. So it was a great bipartisan effort. 
to show that we really need to win back the confidence of the people of Rhode Island. 38 Studio blew that confidence. I don't blame them. It kind of blew my confidence being in the room and being given misinformation and not realize, having to vote on something without having all the pure facts there. All right. We'll see how this goes. Senate yet to, yet to pass. I guess they will. When we come back, another pet bill. Literally. Stay with us. By the way, coming up in our next segment, celebrating 30 years of getting the weather right most of the time, Tony Petrarca. Uh, and wait till you see some of the before and after photos. Or the progressive, they're not before and after. I mean, this has been a long, mm -hmm. it's been, you know, you and me 30 years ago didn't look the same either, did we? <laughs> no. Although you look better than ever. Oh, thank you, Dan. <laughs> I appreciate uh, that. So uh, Tony's coming up in a second. We're going to mark 30 years of excellence on television. Uh, what is this? The headline here. Bill seeks to give pets a voice in Rhode Island divorce cases. First, you had the dogs going to dinner, right? You yeah. wanted pets to be able to go to a restaurant as long as the restaurant said it was okay, right? That's kind of the bill? I wanted the restaurant owners to make that decision. Yeah, you didn't get that passed, did you? I did. Oh, it I is get... now law. Oh, it is law. Sorry. Sorry that I didn't score on that one. <laughs> you know, I'm not real keen on having the dog run around the deck, but that's all right. Depends on whether. I, At I'm, least I'm, now I'm... you'll know because now they have to fi post a sign. You wouldn't have known. Dogs allowed. Before. Yes. <sighs> Where'd you come up with this one? What, 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 so, do, do, really? Actually, it was a reporter who mentioned it to me, um, and I had seen the article where it was passing, I believe, in New York, Alaska, was the first state to have it. And um, looking at the issue, I realized this is a growing problem. 50% of people get, end up in divorce. 62% of people have at least one pet. It's a growing problem. They even have a, a reality show now. It's a pet divorce court on TV I know. where they deal with real cases. There was a San Diego couple spent $140,000 to get who decide who's going to get their pet uh, German Shepherd Gigi. By the way, it always cracks me up that we have the gratuitous pet B-roll as if you don't know what a dog looks like. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> when you put these type of animal bills in, you know you're going to be the butt of a joke. Yes. And people are going to be making all kinds of yes. comments. Suppose it's an ant farm. Yes. How do you divide it up? But, you know, as we had mentioned earlier, I also worked on getting 38 Studios records open. Uh, I went after Deloitte, sent a letter to the state police, the AG, requesting civil criminal investigation. So I'm working on a so you're trying to explain issue. your incredible legislative versatility is what you're trying to say. Yes, and that yes. I'm not okay. afraid to go out there and put in legislation that a lot of people want because some people are going to make me the butt of aren't, a joke. Aren't the dogs viewed as property that needs yes. to be... They are viewed. That's the problem. They're viewed, out. they're viewed as property right now. So what do you want to do? Put the what, dog on the stand and ask him which way what, they want to go? No. What it's going to do is... Bark once if you want to go with mommy. Bark twice if you want to go with daddy. Some of these cases are being heard already. What this legislation is going to do is be able to set up benchmarks for the judge. For example, um, did you have the dog prior to the marriage? Who had the dog? I'm using a dog as an example. Uh, who had the dog first? Who cares for the dog? Who takes the dog to the veterinarian? Who walks the dog? Are there children involved in this divorce? Where are the children going to be living? Um, maybe they need a visitation schedule. So is that going to make the joy? Well, isn't that something that, uh, look, let's not kid ourselves. There's a couch, that's property. There's a car, that's property. There's an IRA, that's property. The dog is living property. I'm guessing right. that now, the, you know, the, the folks uh, in family court who have one of the hardest jobs in the world, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they ask those same questions so that the specialness of that property is properly adjudicated. Don't they do that now? Some, some judges do do that, but we need this law in order to set up the benchmarks to make it standard, clarified across the board. Because what? I You've seen cases where it wasn't properly what? determined or what the the vetting wasn't done well or actually after I put the legislation and I've had so many people call and, and attorneys call me and tell me about horror stories where they went through like I said a woman has spent hundred forty thousand dollars to get her drug that's ridiculous not here uh, San Diego actually that was in um, but there have been problems here we saw last month I don't think the couple was married with a girl because of a dispute took the guy's dog put it in the pound and told the guy the dog ran away the guy happened to two months later go looking to adopt a pet and saw his picture 
towards George's picture. People do crazy things. They, I mean, a, a divorce is a contentious situation. They use the pet for emotional extortion, okay? I know you love this dog, I want the boat. You want the dog, I'm getting the boat. These things happen, it's part of life. It needs to be addressed, you can laugh. But I can bring people here who will tell you it's a very you know serious, I, emotional, yeah, so, racking uh, situation. As I listen and, and look at you, I'm thinking that you are actually tailor-made to be the pet judge. <laughs> that, that, that maybe there's a show already, but I think you know there's always a knockoff and another syndication. You're really into this. Now you're really into this. Yeah, it's a problem. You man. believe that this is. I mean, yeah. Look, I respect passion. You have passion for this. I think maybe you ought to work on a new project and you start to like. You could be the Caprio of pet adjudication. I like that. Thank you. You know, have, yeah. roll the cameras. Hear ye, hear ye, <laughs> Judge Lima, where's the dog? All right. How long have you been walking the dog? Da -da -da -da. You're good at this. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're going to get this that. passed? I, I, I fight for every piece of legislation I put in. What's your, what are your colleagues saying? What are the tea leaves reading? Oh, I, I've been teased all over the place. Somebody said, suppose it's a rabbit. They got a lot of rabbits. Suppose it's an well, ant Well, by the farm. way, is it deeper than dogs? It's any domestic pet. Okay. But we'll fine tune it in yeah. committee so it doesn't gerbils. get crazy. Some people love their gerbils. What can Just, you do? Uh, I love you. <laughs> I really do. I really do. It takes all kinds of issues. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dan. State Representative Charlene Lima. I like the 38 stuff a little better than this, but hey, that's just me. Uh, 30 years, checking the weather, next. <laughs> quiz. Okay. How many inches of snow or rain are required before you roll up your sleeves? Usually a, a, a foot of snow and the sleeves will go up. How many hair products do you use? Three. What happened? Is that, is that, it's a wrong answer. It's wrong. <laughs> All right, four. Four. Four, five. That's three. Here's the headline, 30 years. Now, <laughs> keep it up there, Jess, for a second. Look in the, what is that jacket in the top middle? What year no, was that? No, that's, the, that's the, the sweater jacket. What the heck is that? Oh, that was a, like, Chess King. Remember Chess King? <laughs> no, what is Chess King? King? Like the, that's where you buy that kind of that kind of a jacket back in uh, oh gosh, I don't know, 87, 88 maybe. Yeah, what was I? You know, when I when I see that, I say to myself, what was I? What was I thinking about? Well, you were thinking because it was cool then. That was cool. I then. mean, right now, next year, I mean, ten years from now, that jacket, man. That's why I keep it simple. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to put any pressure on myself here. Congratulations, thirty Thank years. Thank you so much. I Stations marking. Uh, you know, it gets to a point where you become such an institution. Um, that it's almost like you know getting up in the morning or going to bed at night with the same kind of routine. You got to see Tony and the the uh, the audience um, loyalty has obviously shown itself for a long period of time. Appreciate that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I this five minute segment isn't going to be long enough. I'd like to have you come back and talk <laughs> lengthily about the career because the, the business has changed so much and the, the but the weather. That's always a challenge. And you it, know, it stays the same in terms of not knowing what's going to happen next. Well, the technology gets better and better and better, but the science is much like medicine where we're getting a lot better, but it'll, it'll, it'll never be 100% where you, you have a cure for everything. But we're doing, a lot, as you know, we're doing a lot better. But at the, in the end, you know, Mother Nature has the last, the last word. But we've made significant advances in the last 30 years, but it's still not perfect, but a lot better. Yeah. You know, you're actually a really good sport. Because you know, they're, they're, we changed the production time of, of the show a little while back, so I don't get to bump into Tony in the makeup room like I used to on a pretty regular basis. Um, but we, you know, I'm so stupid and so cliche. If it's doing something crazy out there, I say, hey, thanks for the weather. <laughs> and it, it, it must. It's just 30 years of that. Does it ever wear you down? Where people yeah. hold you responsible for climate? No, I. I it's part of the thing. Um, it's, it's part of the business. I remember Walter Cryan uh, telling me, you know, in this business you have to have thick skin. But I find that around here it's really like, it's really just good natured ribbing. It's, you know, you're the weather guy, let's, you know, let's tease the weather guy if the weather doesn't necessarily work out. So most of the time it's just 
know, hey, what happened? Well, the, <laughs> thing, ab the thing about what you do is that it has become clearly instrumentally important for, for newscasts and audience to be kept. The research is just, I don't know what this fascination is that people have with the weather. I mean, this is what he looked like way back. We have the four seconds or worth of uh, old time back in this day. I mean, I don't even, it wasn't such a big deal. We have, it was important, but not like it is today. We have, just go ahead, just, just roll whatever we have there. Looking pretty good. You know, my mom called after the newscast and said, slow down. Holy moly. Yeah, you were, you were talking fast back in the old Nervous. days. Nervous. Nervous. Um, yeah. And you, then, was it as important as, look, all the research, all the investment, the capital expense for the latest technology mm -hmm. and the graphics and the gizmos and the whiz and all, it wasn't that big 30 years ago. No, but, it, you know, it, it's come a long way, the, the, the demand for, uh, I want it now, I want it fast, I want it accurate, and with the digital platforms and, you know, you don't necessarily have to sit down at 6 o'clock in front of the TV. Now, you, you get it from here, you get alerts on your phone, on your iPads, and what's unique about forecasting here is that, you know, we have, as you know, we have four distinct seasons. Uh, we get everything from A to Z. It changes very rapidly. It has high ec um, impact in terms of the economy, people making money, people losing money when the, when the weather is, you know, either X, Y, or Z. So. Yeah. Um, well, you make a you make a prediction about a big snowstorm and it doesn't come. They want to they, they want to choke you. Yeah, um, because there there are people who will make money and there are people who will lose money on that forecast that didn't necessarily. Which is why you take it so seriously. Well, I do. Well I, I, I because it, because I get the email and I get the phone calls and it will be like, hey, um, I need to know this because I don't want to spend the money if if this is going to happen or. So I, I realize the, the impact for people in their day-to-day -day lives as far as, especially people who work outdoors for a living. One thing that drives me crazy though, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not the guy that wants to sit there for five minutes and let's see the patterns. Even though I got a D in meteorology in high school and I kind of understand the whole thing. My track coach, I wasn't running well enough, so he gave me a D. But anyway, mm -hmm. there's a long lead up to the doggone forecast. Oh, you mean check back, tune in, check back? Well, that, that's broadcast promotion. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about maps and this and that. Just give me the seven day or whatever it is. It's funny you should say that because during our 5.30 newscast, we actually do it completely different. And that is I start with the seven day and I stay on the seven day the entire two minutes and I start picking apart the seven day. I like that better. Based on what you just said. And we've gotten research feedback that says, you know what? I love that. And what we do is we'll, we'll put up a seven day and then we'll start pulling out information. And explain it. And exp as opposed to working up to it. All I want to know is do I play golf tomorrow morning? You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So the, the 530 newscast was built for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to come back because this, this segment's way too small. Yeah. I, I want to talk about the career. You know, people know a lot about you, but not everything, um, and, and celebrate the 30 years. When are we doing this? Is there some stuff on the air coming up uh, momentarily? Uh, We've had we, we aired stuff last night. There's, st there's stuff on the uh, on the web, and you know Good. me. I'm downstairs. You find yes. me anytime. We'll come right back up. All right, we'll have you roll your sleeves up and come back up. Congratulations, we'll man. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. What a fabric of the community, huh? Institution, 30 years. I think you look better. <laughs> Final word when we come back. I mean, think about it. 30 years of one gig is a it's an accomplishment and being a real fabric of the community. Good for Tony. Uh, I'd love to get your feedback uh, on the radio on WPRO, we days three to six on this pet bill that Charlene Lima has. Um, I get it. No, I get it. I sort of get it. Uh, what I don't get is the governor's plan for two years of free college tuition. A uh, little bit of a diplomatic debate, in fact a lot of it of a diplomatic debate with the president of URI, Dr. David Dooley, coming up on tomorrow's show. So tune in for that. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. See ya.